to make a statement about you about why I feel that Brenton should not, Brenton Trump should not return. First of all, I think uh, I agree with the sentiments of some of the individuals that came up before. Uh, he had a tough job. He still has a tough job. I'm believing that we have enough um, reason to give him that opportunity to do his job. Whenever there's filth in the city, uh, the sin of filth likes to hide itself as an angel of light. And I believe Mr. Mary would like our last year came to see that she's not aware of that. I believe that's simply because darkness don't come to say, here I'm, here I'm dark. The enemy doesn't come and say, I'm going to kill you. There are, I believe, special groups behind the scenes that all have already made up their mind that he should not be a part of the city. Uh, the report that you uh, that we were, we were looking at, I think that three things that sum it up is that one, the relationship with the council. He seems to have a negative relationship with the council. I don't think that is a, that that's the council as a whole. I think it's just a group of individuals. Groups of, group of individuals that are controlled by other individuals that are not happy. And I think that that is a direct reflect of the corruptness that we are talking about here. Um, number two is Mr. Rodney, Rodney Lucas. Uh, Rodney Lucas, I hear about him getting promoted to another position. He has two master degrees. I believe that he's more than qualified. In, in any village, you, you promote from the inside if possible. Uh, so I don't think that many, even the council members, can say that they have two master degrees. That he's more than qualified for the job. And like someone else said, why have him, Mr. Mayor? Not getting paid to do anything. If there's an opening, it only makes business sense to move them up. Number three, the report that we read clearly stated that there were no cover-ups. No cover-ups. So when we talk about, hey, you know, you covered up the chief and, and these things, uh, we did not see those things. And the report also stated that there was no cover-up. So all of what really boiled down, we just got a bunch of people feeling, I don't like this guy, and, and I, that for my opinion, you know, he should do stuff my way. Like, you didn't go get the degree that, that a city manager needs. And I believe he's brought a lot of good taxes uh, to our places, some good money into our, our, uh, our city. Uh, and I believe that also, Mr. Mayor, when we look at why, I don't think he should be fired as well is you can't micromanage a guy and expect him to do an extraordinary job. You can't surround him with people who are looking for him to sleep instead of helping him to stay. When we look at even the report, and you see that in the report, that some of these credit card issues with even with the chief himself was over a two year period. I have many businesses as well that my finance director didn't let that slip for two years. I think even members of the council, Mr. Rasmus, he's a man of reason, he's a home computer. You should, we should be able, Mr. Mayor, to say, this is not acceptable. It can't be acceptable. How can I do my job when I only have one HR person? How can I do my job when my financial director is a part of the issue? So, Mr. Mayor, I'm, happy, I'm, I'm hoping that we can do one or two things tonight. One, that I call upon you to be a voice of reason. And two, I, I call upon you not to rush to this decision because it is going to tear this, this city apart. Because there are a lot of good people that believe that Redmond is a good man, he's good for the city. And I believe that we have a segment of individuals that just want to see status quo, don't want to give an opportunity. 30 seconds. So, Mr. Mayor, I would ask you this to even consider this. Uh, if any council member would make this motion, not to rush to judgment, to give an opportunity uh, for this to be pushed back until the end of elections, and then see if the, the people can have an opportunity, he can have an opportunity to work with the new council board that will be there, even if it's the same thing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further public comment. Mary, for your body again.
Screw up. I'm going to have to ask you if you can speak up or go closer to the mic. Okay. okay, thank you. Mary, for your value then. I guess I don't know why we're here. Florida has a right to work state. Council hires and it has the right to fire. Mr. Jones serves at the pleasure of the council. He took numerous occasions to ask for feedback and guidance on his performance. He's been given performance reviews. He had to know that his performance was lacking and it was under his control to improve it. Many of us in the audience have been laid off. Most of us were laid off, told to pack up our things, and walked out under supervision to leave the building. This was not an unusual way to end, to end an employment. I just don't understand why we're here. There's nothing more to discuss. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Further public comment? Jeff Hurl and Claremont Florida, also the former building official for the city of Rowland. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, tonight you have a very important decision to make that will ultimately decide the direction of the city of Rowland. In order for you to make these decisions, I feel like you need as much pertinent information as possible. With that being said, I'd like you to turn your attention to the handouts I provided. That outlines my interaction with the city manager that dealt uh, in detail with the basis of the false FDLE complaint you filed against me. If you look at Exhibit 1, you'll see an email between myself and Ryan Berger. That email clearly outlines, uh, outlines the fact that the City of Groveland, through Ryan Berger, knew about the practice of charging the minimum value for various permits. Please take note of the date of that email. The email was from May of 2015. Also note my original response. I responded by saying this was contractual. Also, it's important to note who's copied on page 2 of the Exhibit 1. Go to page two of that exhibit. You'll see Redmond Jones and Ryan Berger are copied on this. So they're clearly aware in May of 2015 of what's going on in the city as far as the contractual agreement we have. Now, if you look at exhibit two, we'll take note of the language that's high level. This is a contract Redmond Jones negotiated with Alpha Inspections. It clearly states the building official has the authority to determine the minimum value of the projects to cover the minimum cost associated with providing services. That language gave me as building official the authority to determine the value of all projects, uh, which includes the minimum value of all projects. So I've clearly shown that the city, through Ryan Berger and Redmond Jones, was aware of this practice in May of 2015, and that the contract language written by Redmond Jones gave me the authority to determine the value of all projects. Now let's flash forward to October of 2015. If you look at Exhibit 3, you'll see where I requested a meeting with Redmond Jones to get on the agenda to have the contract extended. Now, if that date's important, so you can, if you don't mind looking at it, it's October. Okay? If you look at Exhibit 4, you'll see a curious email from Ryan Berger, okay, about two weeks later. Now, since we had already discussed this issue back in May, I found it just incredible that he would send that email. I really didn't know what he was up to when he did it. I didn't know at the time that they were trying to derail a possible contract extension. I also didn't know that they were in the process of filing a false FDLE complaint. I say this because I'm aware that after sending me this email, they met with the city attorney who advised them that this was controlled, yet an FDLE complaint was still filed. I think that shows poor judgment on the city manager's part to not listen to the city attorney. Again, contractual. If you look at Exhibit 5, I'm sorry, I'm going fast, but I only have five minutes. As you can see in Paragraph 2, the contract language requires the city to notify Alpha Inspections in writing the city objects to the manner that Alpha enforces any ordinance related to construction 
which would include the legally adopted fee schedule. By Mr. Jones filing this false FDLE complaint, he not only broke the law, but he also violated the terms of the contract. Yes, his actions breached the contract. However, that's not where Mr. Jones stopped. Mr. Jones approached the city of Fruitland Park and tried to set up a meeting with the city manager there to discuss what was going on in Groveland. He attempted to destroy my business relationship there as well. Now ask yourself this question. Is Redmond Jones acting in good faith as the city manager of Groveland by going to Fruitland Park? Keep in mind that Alpha Inspections does not have a contractual relationship with Fruitland Park. The only connection there is Jeff Gerland. So he was making this personal, and he was going after me. Now I've been working in Groveland for the past 15 years. For the most part, the employees here are good people trying to do a good job. In all my years working in Groveland, I've never seen a working environment like the one at City Hall when Redmond Jones was city manager. A lot of these people in the audience don't have the pleasure of working at City Hall. I do. I've seen it. There you have cronyism. If you're a friend, you can be extremely unqualified for a position, yet you're advanced into it anyway. If you're a friend, you can come and go as you please. You do not need to explain to your peers where you are or when you'll be back. If you're a friend, you can be easy and favor you. If you're a friend, you can be extremely incompetent in your job, and it won't matter. Mr. Chairman, 30 seconds. Yes, that's what most of the employees who aren't his friend feel every day at work. If you happen to not like the cronyism, the favoritism, and the nepotism, and speak up, you're sure to feel the pressure and fear that will be coming your way. I'd like to finish the rest, but I understand if I can. No. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. My name is Rodney Lucas, the interim director of community development, and I just wanted to review a couple of things. Can everyone hear me? I wanted to speak into the record that there's no cronyism here. I graduated from Clark College in 1987 with a BA in finance. Graduated from there in 1992 with my master's degree in public administration and city management. I went on to receive two more master's degrees from the University of Missouri at Kansas City in urban administration as well as nonprofit management. I've worked with the cities of Kansas City, Kansas, the city of Las Vegas, the state of Missouri, the city of Kansas City, Missouri, as well as the city of Gladstone, Missouri. I feel I'm more than qualified in working here for the last two and a half years. I received my certificate of public management from Florida State University over an 18-month period, which I appreciate the council allowing me to do that. I just want you to know that there are real people here working that try to make a difference. I'd like to thank the council for allowing me to work at their leisure. I just wanted to refute that there's no cronyism here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Thank you.